Good morning, Facebook fam. What's up this morning, this beautiful Saturday morning? I just wanted to come on real quick. Um, I actually was going to do this um, as a uh, blog, but I just didn't have time to do the writing. So I figured I would do a video um, because it's quicker and I like doing videos. So as you can see from the title, this is Tell Them Why You're Mad. And I actually got that. One of the things I love to do is watch The Breakfast Club. Um, I literally, every Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. on Revolt TV, watch The Breakfast Club. And so they do this thing where they say, you know, you call in and tell them why you're mad. Um, and so I wanted to do something like that because there are a few things that if I had a care in the world, <laughs> these are a few things that, that um, would make me mad. Um, and I have to start off with this disclaimer. I say if I had a care in the world. The reason I say that is because really, truly, I do believe um, as a Christian, I, I really don't ascribe to the things of this world. I really don't. Um, I believe in the finished work of the cross. I believe the favor of God on my life. I believe the promises of God. I believe the word of God. And so I understand with that that none of these things that happen in the world really, um, really can move me. Um, and I just really don't ascribe to it. So, you know, I see things, I pray about it, and I kind of keep it moving on to the next thing. So I usually don't give energy to a lot of the negativity that you see in the world. But with that disclaimer, um, if I did have a care in the world, here are a few things that I'm going to tell you why I'm mad. The first thing is that I am legit mad that Prince is dead. Like, I cannot believe it. Every time I think about it, like something in my heart, like my heart just kind of stops. I am really upset that he's gone um and and don't give me i mean I, I think i love prince just as much as anybody else um i i i don't say that i'm a fan because i've never been really a fan of anybody um i love his music i love his energy but i think more than anything more than his music which was a um um which was a, you know a demonstration of him the person the spirit um, I think I just love his creative spirit. You know, there was something about knowing that um, Prince was in the world that just made the world feel better. I don't know. You can see my Tupac thing. I had the same feeling with Tupac as well. That's a whole nother conversation because I know people be like Tupac, but a whole nother conversation. It really is something about the spirit of a person um, that uh, resonates with me. So I can really see beyond all of the antics and all of the things that people do and just really kind of understanding the, the, the spiritual, um, the, the spiritual growth and the spiritual walk of a person. And when I talk about spirituality, I, you know, I'm not necessarily talking about people who are Christian or anything, but people who understand that there's something bigger in them and, uh, and, and they, they struggle to try to share that in the best way that they can. Um, and so that's what I say when I, when, what I think about when I think about Tupac and also what I think about when I think about Prince. So to know that um, a spirit like Prince is no longer here, um, it, it just makes the world feel a little emptier for me. Um, and so I, I truly, truly just miss knowing that he's around. And I didn't realize that until he was gone, like literally, I remember the fr I think it was a Friday when I, no, it wasn't a Friday. I think it was a Thursday. Yeah, I think it was a Thursday when I found out that he had passed away. And I just like, the week is over. Like, you, you didn't realize, I didn't realize that how much I loved his spirit until he was no longer here. So that's one of the things that really, truly, um, in real life that I'm kind of, you know, my heart hurts for is the fact that Prince is no longer here. Uh, the second thing that makes me mad, and you can see the frow in my brow, uh, the frow in my brow, <laughs> sounds like a Dr. Seuss line, uh, but the second thing that makes me mad is the fact that Donald, seriously people, Donald Trump is like legit a candidate for presidency of the United States. That is unbelievable to me. Um, unbelievable to me. I, 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 I find myself speechless when I think about it, and the, really the only thing I can do is kind of laugh because, but it's not funny. So I laugh because I know that, you know, whatever happens, like seriously, it, it's not going to change anything. It really isn't. Um, I, I just don't believe that it will. Um, but I laugh because this is, this is like real kind of showing the state of our, uh, the state of mind of the country, you know, that people are seriously listening to this guy and are seriously considering him uh, and voting for him and literally, uh, you know, checking his name as a candidate for presidency. That is unbelievable to me. Um, the one of the things I say all the time is that, um, this is more telling of the state of the country than anything else. And I think that's the bigger issue 
And, and so I think if we took time to really de delve into like the mindset of the person who is voting for Trump, like really truly understanding why, um, I think we, we wouldn't be surprised of the responses, but I think that that would give us more indication on what needs healing um, as opposed to uh, just being angry that he is, you know, he's, he's uh, the presidential nominee, um, Republican nominee. Um, the other thing that makes me mad is trying to think of what order to go. I think the other thing I would say this, the other thing that makes me mad is the, um, uh, the, uh, and I'm trying not to censor myself, <laughs> but so I, I'll say this. The other thing that makes me mad is the, um, the irresponsibleness of people. And it's particularly the irresponsibility of people on social media and how we use social media. And um, Periscope in particular, but I'm sure all social media platforms, uh, you know, have its, uh, its, its vulnerabilities and in, in that people use it very irresponsibly. Um, Periscope in particular, because I've heard over the past couple of weeks just some really disturbing things that's happening on Periscope. Uh, I, I, I heard that someone's actually periscoped a rape, which is insane to me. Um, I actually heard that someone committed suicide on Periscope, periscope which is insane to me. But it's this kind of um, barbaric, uh, voyageristic kind of thing that this, this platform creates that um, people just get really in their feelings. And I think that is the... That's the danger of Periscope. I, I remember when my friend first introduced me to Periscope and, uh, you know, kind of got on there. And it was just really weird for me. Um, it was very weird because you have this real time kind of exchange with people who don't know you. And um, and they send these hearts up. And, and you know, who, 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 who doesn't love a heart, right? Who doesn't love love? So you can talk about anything and people are like sending love to you. And you think that what you're saying is um is really is really resonating with people um and so you keep saying no matter what it is that you're talking about it's just a very very weird platform for me and i think it's very dangerous and immediately like i said when my friend introduced me to it i just really felt the um the sinistry of it if sinistry is a word but uh sinistry i think that could be a word what i'm trying to say is the sinner 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 sinister <laughs> felt very sin sinful <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just it's just something about it that just did not feel um didn't feel pure to me. Um sinful, I guess. I get why well, can I say that word? It, it just felt very sinful to me. And it felt like a platform like that just wasn't a healthy platform. And so I was very disturbed to hear the different things that's happening on that uh that platform. Um very disturbing, very, very disturbing. But I think again, it goes back to the state of mind of the people. I think that we as a society have really uh as my dad would say, you know, been knocked off our square. Like we are all over the place. Um and, and it's like when you begin to challenge the foundation of things, when you begin to uproot the foundation of things, it just becomes very, very imbalanced. And I think that's where we are as a society, very, very imbalanced, very much out of balance for various reasons, which brings me to my fourth point of why I'm mad. Um, now, before I say, in fact, I'm not even going to disclaim it. it is what it is. I am upset that with this whole, uh, what is it? The, a trend, the gender identification or gender relation, whatever it is. I don't know what the word is. Um, I'm upset that children are becoming a face of this movement. Um, as adults, I don't care what adults do. I really don't. You, you know, you, you choose and you, you go with what you feel you need to go with. Um, but when you begin to put children as the face of this, I have a fundamental issue with that. Uh, I was watching something I think I caught a glimpse of the news the other day, yesterday, perhaps. I think it was yesterday because um, they were talking about, I guess, the federal government uh, put down a mandate that in schools you have to allow kids to go to the bathroom where they most identify. And so if I'm a girl and I identify as a boy, then I get to go to the boy's bathroom and vice versa. Um, again, as adults, I don't care what you do. As adults, you know, Bruce Jenner and all that stuff, or I don't even know what's 
girl name, but um, all that stuff, you know, you do what you want to do as an adult, especially as a senior citizen, like <laughs> you do whatever you want to do. But when kids become the face of this, it just, it's very disturbing to me. Um, I think it was Ravi Zacharias who, who and he probably quoted someone else, but he, he talked about how you can tell the state of, of, of a society by how they treat their children. And, um, and this is just another example to me of how imbalanced we are as a society when the children become now the face of this transgender movement. Again, I don't care what you do. I, I, I personally, I don't want to, um, I don't know. I, I think it's a slippery slope. Like most things, it's a very slippery slope. I think that people who are adults and have made that decision that this is who they are and this is how they identify. That's their cross the bear, you know, that's their thing to, to work through. Um, I couldn't imagine what that feeling is like, so I don't question it just because I don't experience it doesn't mean that it's not real for some people. Um, so I don't question that. My only concern is the fact that now we're putting children as the face of this movement. And I have a fundamental issue with that. My children are adults. So I, you know, you know, our conversations are a lot different because they're more mature and they can understand it. But I could not imagine having to have a conversation with my kids in elementary school of why this kid is going into a girl's bathroom when, by all accounts, he's a boy. So um, I have an issue with that. So uh, that's the fourth thing that makes me mad. And I think the now here's the here's the last thing, the fifth thing that uh, why am I mad? why why am I mad? Now, with the whole Oscar outrage, I think I may have commented on the Oscar thing back when it was there and really didn't have too much to say about it, you know. Um, but in light of all of that, I have been just kind of checking out some of the movies, some of the TV series, some of the things that we as black folk, people of color, um, African-Americans, whatever you want to call yourself, um, just some of the movies that have been depicting us lately. And I was watching, uh, actually it was one demand trying to find something to watch. And I come across the fact that they're doing Roots again. Um, now Roots was a, was, I think a very important movie in its time. I think in 1970, uh, was it 74, 76? I don't know when it, 78. I don't know. Uh, you can correct me, please do. Um, and I could probably Google it after I finish this video, but in any case, and when it came out, I think it was very appropriate at the time. Um, and I think it was very significant at the time. I don't know how I feel about them doing the roots again. I think that there's too much saturation of, uh, slave type movies. And yes, I said it, slave type movies. I think that our story is so much more diverse than that. Um, in 2016, I think that there we have a first African, a first literally African American president. Um, so why are we still talking about slavery? Um, I, I don't know. I, I struggle with that. So again, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, or voice your opinion if you if you think I'm out of pocket. But I, so I'm struggling with this whole idea of supporting yet another slave movie. I tried to give, uh, what is the show? Um, oh, I can't even think it was a show that was just on WGNA. Um, oh, I can't even think of the movie, but it was a movie about um, slavery. And I think John Legend was like the producer. Um, Jeez, I can't remember the name of it. And I watched it and it was kind of like, mm. so you, you know, you get caught up in it. I cannot think of the name of the movie, um, but you can probably find it on demand. Um, I cannot think of the name of it. That's going to like really get on my nerves. Babe, what's the name of the movie? Underground. This, Underground. There you go. Underground. So, you know, kind of watch that and, um, and you, you know, you take it in, but I don't know. I think I'm, I think I'm, um, I've had my feel, feel F I L L with, uh, slave movies. And I just think we need to do something more. We need to do something better. And I'm talking to me and people like me who call themselves writers. You know, uh, we have to be able to tell our story a little bit different and we have to be able to tell our story. I was a little disturbed and still am that, uh, with this whole root series that there are, I think it's like at least a couple of the, the episodes, maybe three out of maybe four. Um, I don't know how many episodes they're going to have, but at least three of those episodes, I, uh, peeped that they were written by uh, Jewish writers. And um, why, you know, why are, why is anyone else telling our story? And, and, and furthermore, why are they telling stories about slavery? 
in 2016. So those are some of the things that if I had a care in the world, <laughs> those are some of the things that I would probably be on my soapbox about, you know, those are some of the things that, um, that, uh, kind of disturbed me, you know, the whole, you know, Prince being dead, that very sad, uh, Donald Trump being the, uh, serious candidate for presidency. That's unbelievable. Um, the irresponsibility on social media. That's, you know, very sad. Um, the kids being a face of a transgender, at least for this whole bathroom thing, um, is a little disturbing to say the least. And, um, yeah, these slave movies, I'm just kind of over it all. So those are the things, if you care to know what's going on in my brain, if I, like I said, if I had a care in the world, those are the things that uh, that make me mad. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, this was just a Saturday morning rant uh, as I get ready to prepare for my day and get some things moving and shaking. So yeah, those are my thoughts. You can feel free to put a comment. You can feel free to, you know, whatever. But um, those are my thoughts. So just wanted to share. So blessings.